Hey everyone, David Earl here for Pyramind with your tip and trick of the day. One thing that's really uh, useful to do within Logic or any other digital audio workstation is side chaining. It's a way by which you can affect the properties of one channel strip with the output of the audio from another channel strip. So one classic example is vocoding. So on this software instrument that I have up here, I want to place a vocoder on this channel strip. So the Evoc 20 is Logic's vocoder. Make it nice and big. Now if you play it by itself, it has some cool synth patches and everything like that. But what makes it really interesting is that we can feed it and start modulating it with another audio source like say my voice. So this is the synth. This is the analog signal. Now the only way that we can modulate this Evoc 20, we can add a, a modulator into it, is to use a sidechain. Sidechain is in the upper right hand corner of any plugin that has sidechain capabilities. So to get this to sidechain, I'm going to create an audio channel strip and on that audio channel strip, I need to make sure that my software monitoring is enabled. So I'll open up my audio preferences and under general, I want to make sure my software monitoring is enabled. I'm going to look at my audio interface and I see the input device is Soundflower. I actually want to change that to my Apollo. All right, now I hear myself doubled. I'm gonna hit mute. So what I wanna do is I wanna feed my voice into the vocoder, but I don't necessarily need to even hear it. So on the channel strip, I'm gonna choose no output for its output. And then on the send, I'm gonna use bus 10 is what I always like to use for any kind of side chaining. I'll turn it up and I'm gonna Click and hold here on the send assignment and choose pre-fader. So that way it doesn't matter how low the fader is, it's still always going to send the audio from this channel strip through the side chain. So I'll turn the mute off and turn the volume down. Now it automatically created an auxiliary to the right. The next thing I wanna do is take that auxiliary, say no output on the auxiliary, control click the solo, and I'm going to call this auxiliary SC feed. All right, there we go. So now I got my audio coming in on this channel. I am sending it to the SC feed, hopefully. Let's see, it's going to bus 10. There's bus 10. And on the side chain here, I'm going to assign that to bus 10 in the Evoc 20. So I'll go up here and turn the Evoc 20 on, switch to vocoder mode. And in vocoder mode, it's not going to do anything until it starts hearing signal from my voice. So I go to this audio channel and it's, oh, it's not sending anything. Set my output to stereo output and still not sending anything. Isn't that awesome? Put it, wow, oh, there we go. I need to have the input on. So there we go. Now I have a beautiful monitoring system. I just needed to make sure that my input was turned on. Okay, so there you go. I had to turn on my input in order to get it all going. So this, of course, is tremendously complicated. And we don't want to keep having to do this every time we want to get a vocoder up. So what would be really helpful is if we could save this vocoder setting, all of this all together as a patch, so we don't have to do this again. Well, in Logic 10.1 and 10.2, you can do that now. So I'm gonna call this vocoder feed. And this is my vocoder. I'm gonna open up my mixer by hitting X. And I'm also gonna add my sidechain feed to the tracks area by hitting control T. There we go. Now I'll take all of this cool stuff 
hold shift so I can have them all selected. And I'm going to hit shift command G, or you can come up to track, create track stack, summing stack. Okay, now the summing stack is ready to go. I'll call it vocoder setup. And if I come back down into the tracks, make sure that you have your input enabled. And this is going to be passing MIDI through all these devices, but you should still come down here, turn your input on, record and input on. And now you can see the side feed, uh, side chain feed is going. And I can just play it now and record. So let me try recording. So you can see now that the vocal was recorded down here, and here's the uh, the vocoder. It should play back just fine if I turn off the recording and everything. Now I may have played the notes a little bit before the beat, so I'll just quantize the tape notes. Cool. So let's try saving this as a patch now. Go up to vocoder setup, open the library by hitting Y, click save. Vocoder setup. Now it's trying to send it to the auxiliary. Let's see what happens when I do that. Will it still work? Question of the day. I'm going to create a software instrument. And if I go to my patches, there is no user patch setting. So that means it didn't work. If I open up my auxiliaries down here, I'm going to add an auxiliary to the tracks area and then go to my library again, user patches, vocoder setup. There it is. So since it was saved as an auxiliary in the patches, it did not save under instruments. So could I save it under instruments? Well, we should try that too. So I'm going to save, and instead of under auxiliary, I'm going to put it under instrument. Delete. Now I'm on an instrument. If I go to user patches and vocoder setup, guess what? There it is. Now, did it retain all the busing that we need? If I open up the mixer, I can see that the vocoder is set to bus one. I can see that the vocoder feed is set to bus one. And then I have a send that's going to bus two, which is set up correctly. The only thing that is not saved that I would prefer to have saved, but it's really not a huge deal, is control clicking this S to get it solo saved. Because that way, if you solo other instruments, your vocoder all of a sudden isn't cut off. But there you go. I just thought that was really cool. Like the ability to save side-chained instruments uh, as a patch that was never available before. And now we have that ability and it's totally cool. Okay, I'll see you next time. Ciao. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more. And that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music. Um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well.
Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.